How's it going, everyone? Welcome, Orange Tree Fear, founder of Connects uh, TV, episode six with the legendary Dr. Greg Reed. He's a award-winning author, entrepreneur, speaker, and filmmaker. We are so honored and blessed to have him on our show. Greg, thanks so much and welcome. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Let's rock and roll. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Greg, we've been following you a long time. Just want to go on a little bit into like who you are, what you're doing right now, and uh, kind of the latest events that's currently what's happening in Greg Reed's life as of today. I appreciate you asking. For those of you who are new to my work, I've been published in about 110 books, 45 different languages. I make major motion pictures. And right now I'm working on a couple of TV reality shows here in San Diego, California. But I'm telling you, I'm ready for the world to open up because I need some human engagement and interaction again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think that's. I think we all need that. That's why we all need to listen to more of uh, you, Greg, and what you're doing. And I see that you have an event coming up actually February I think it's February 26th or 25th, the growth hacking. What is that? How can people join that? Because that might be a good way for us to all engage with you again. Yeah, well, it's been said that we're a reflection of the people we hang around the most, our income, attitude, lifestyles, the average of the group. If you hang around champions, you become one too. Ken has put together some amazing human beings and we're coming together as a collective to share our little golden nuggets so we can inspire people that are ready for that information at the right time. That's amazing, Greg. We can't wait to be part of it. We're such an honor to have you here. Now, I wanted to dive a little bit into Bob Proctor because that's how we got connected. I just talked to him this morning, actually, and just kind of curious the effect that he had on your life and what Think and Grow Rich did for you and maybe some other books or maybe other mentors besides Bob that came into your life that other people could find helpful too. Okay, well, you just threw out a whole bunch of information for those who are not really up to date with my work. So Take this the beginning. So Napoleon Hill in 1908, was given a letter by Mr. Carnegie to go meet all of his friends and wrote the first ever formula for success. A hundred years later to the date, the Napoleon Hill Foundation gave me the same letter. So basically I have a ticket to meet any human alive and I write the Think and Grow Rich series through the Napoleon Hill Foundation. The first book we did was Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet from Gold, then Stickability, and then Bob Proctor and I together wrote Thoughts Are Things, where your thoughts become reality by the actions in which you take. Mm, amazing. Just absolutely amazing, Greg. We're all so honored to even have you. We're just so blessed to have somebody like you. And what about the uh, Wish Man on Netflix? That's kind of big. I just watched it with my family, actually. That was an incredible movie. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it was interesting. The founder of Make-A-Wish, uh, I was writing a book called Think and Grow Rich, Stick Ability. And I asked him a question, you know, what was your wish? And he said that no one ever asked him. I said, well, I want to grant your wish. What do you want? And he says, I just want my story to be told so my grandkids will know I did something cool. He signed over his life rights and it took years and trials and tribulations, but we actually made the, the final ballad for the Oscars last year, got Oscar qualified and we're trending on Netflix right now called Wish Man. Here's the moral, everyone can be a hero. You don't need to be a millionaire or a celebrity. Go give a pair of socks to a homeless guy. Stop a bully from fighting. Everyone can do something to have a ripple effect. That's amazing, Greg. Just everything you say that comes out of your mouth is just incredible. This We need more books from you. We need just we just need more Greg Reed. So that's amazing. And I got to ask you something, you know, and Bob asks me this all the time, but your goal, your C type goal, what is it that the legendary Greg Reed is chasing after? Uh, creativity. I like creation. I mean, it's so interesting. Daniel Laporte wrote this one book and she talked about the difference between being detached and non-attached. Detached means you don't care. Non-attached means you give it everything you got and then you're not attached to the outcome. So I'm constantly creating and writing new books and new projects where I go to the very best I can and I, the deliverables is as, as awesome as I can get it. But if people like it or don't like it, that's not up to me. <laughs> I don't take it personally. And it's the creation process that keeps me going. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Well. Um... You know, I think the goal that you're chasing after is very inspiring and everybody wants to follow more of you. So I have another question for you because I got a hold of you actually on Clubhouse with Les Brown the other day, which was absolutely incredible. So just curious how any more thoughts on Clubhouse or any more groups or things that we could be part of with you? Like when's the next Clubhouse? You're going to have weekly ones. Yeah, we're going to do weekly Clubhouse. I, I mean, what a different app and modality. I don't know how long it's going to last. I, I did understand really quickly, though, it gave a lot of people a voice 
And just because you have a microphone doesn't mean you always have something to say. So what I'm going to recommend is that people start following people that can give credible source information. Meaning, look, if they're teaching you how to become an Instagram influencer by buying a new Fendi bag and taking a picture in a bikini, I don't know if that's the right information that we need as business leaders. So I'm saying choose the people that you follow wisely, but then tune in and then see how you can be a support and contribution back so they can bring you up on their stage and build an alliance mm -hmm. and friendship for years to come. That's amazing, Greg. Really appreciate that. Now, um, I only had a few questions for you, so I just really wanted to leave it a little bit more open-ended for you and just think, you know, what else could you tell people or help people with? I mean, this show I created in terms of just helping people with, you know, their dreams and goals and having inspirational leaders like yourself on here. So anything else you could think of that's coming up in the next few months or travel plans or people should look out for in terms of what you're doing? Yeah, I started a mastermind group. It's interesting. I actually own the domain name, mastermindgroup.com, mastermindgroup.com. And the idea was, is that I wanted to bring positive, like-minded people, not coaches and teachers and mentors, but the actual people who accomplish what everyone else is talking about. So my mastermind group is here at my house in San Diego in July. And I'm, you know, people want to get in the show business. So I'm bringing the founder of the E! Entertainment Network in, you know, discover the Kardashians and made E! Entertainment right here you can hang out and have tacos if you have a clothing line the founder of the multi-billion dollar brand ugg boots is going to be here you can shoot a game of pool imagine hanging out with the person who's the you know the image on the cover of call of duty right now uh two one of the greatest green berets ever uh that lived on the planet earth is going to come hang out with us all the way to these amazing you know oscar winning people to whatever and my goal is to surround myself with my friends so they can become your friends what a concept Amazing. So many people sit there and say, oh, it's easy for you. You've got all these people. BS. Here you go. I'm giving it right back to you. Do something with it. But here's my nugget for people. Successful people seek counsel and failures listen to opinion. Mm. Opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge, inexperience, like all your family, friends who've never done what you want. Counsel is based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. If you go to a family friend and say you're going to write a best-selling book, they're going to try to talk you out of it because they've never written a best-selling book. But if you go to Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, he considers what you need to know and give you counsel based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship. If we would spend our activity only seeking, only listening to counsel and ignoring people's opinion, that's the day your life would change. Mm, I totally agree with you on that. That's something that happened to me too. So maybe we could expand on that. But um, a lot of people I found have a lot of negativity, a lot of negative stuff coming into their head, into their head. And, you know, in Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill talks about having a mind tightly closed to anything else. So what was it like for you as you were rising to the legendary status you have now? What, what was it like trying to defend your mind against people that were saying all these negative things? Maybe, Greg, you can't do this. You can't do that. What was that like? And how did you overcome that? How did you build that mental discipline? Well, never let another person or yourself talk you out of what you know to be true. And again, if you surround yourself with people who are getting the results you want, it changes your sphere of influence. When I wanted to be a best-selling author, I didn't go to Barnes & Noble and bought every great write, written book. I didn't want to be a great writing author. I want to be a best-selling author. So I went to that section and I called all those authors and said, teach me, what's the system? They did. And here we are today. So the whole idea is how can you surround yourself with people that are getting the results you want? And you talk about something about negative. You know, when Bob and I wrote a book called Thoughts Are Things, we interviewed the top neuroscientists and Harvard professors and realized that thoughts are not things. Mm -hmm. It's only thoughts backed by our actions become reality. Uh, if thoughts were things, I'd be a slice of pizza because <laughs> I'm hungry right now, right? But when we're done with this and I get on the DoorDash and order a slice of pizza, my thoughts become realities by the actions that we would take. We have 64,000 thoughts a day. Majority of them are ants, automatic negative thoughts. They're the reptilian part of your brain to protect you, to keep you safe. So if thoughts were things, then everything should be drama and chaos in our life, but it's not. In fact, I can tell somebody exactly their thoughts by the circle and the sphere of influence, and more importantly, the lifestyle that they've chosen for themselves. So many people come up and they say, man, I wish I had a Lamborghini. And I go, no, you don't. Because if you really wanted one, you'd have one. If you're saying you want something and not having it just means you don't want it bad enough. You know, those successful people, no matter what it is, will always find a way. If you don't believe me, if you can't afford you know, holiday Christmas presents this year, somehow they magically appear under the tree because you got a deadline and a goal and you find a way to make it happen. Everything is that way. Set a goal. The easiest way to hit a goal is to have a goal to hit. That's so amazing. Just absolutely incredible. I mean, I totally agree with you in terms of that thoughts 
become things you know, as long as you take action, you know, the constant ants that you have in your mind. So that's really interesting. You touched on that. Another thing I wanted to ask you about that uh, is coming up soon is your CPC acronym, which is amazing. A guy like me, I'm worried about clicks per per user, clicks, you know, clicks per page, but CPC is something a little bit different. Could you, would you mind unpacking what that means for the audience? Yeah, CPC is an acronym that I learned from a buddy of mine, Mark Anthony Bates. It stands for Clues, Patterns, Choices, CPC. It's about accountability and responsibility for every single thing that happens. Stop blaming other people. So I'm a single guy, and let's say I go out on a first date, and the woman happens to be 20 minutes late. Anything could have happened. Car accident, who knows? But there's a little red flag. That's the first C. But if I keep going on the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth date with her, and every time she's 20 minutes late, that forms a P, which is a pattern. Now, it's my C choice whether I deal with it, yell at her, break up, but it's not her fault. She's just late. Stop trying to change people to fit in your own little world. But we see people with a bad reputation in business. They cheat your best friend. You do business thinking it'll be different. Things go wrong and you're mad at the person. You saw the clue. You saw the pattern. You made the choice. It's like seeing a rattlesnake rattle, bite your kid's sister. You go to pedicate bit. You're mad at the snake. Looking back, rarely are we angry at the relationships that we enter that didn't go good or the business practices that failed. We're just mad that we stayed in too long. It's because we saw the clue, we saw the pattern, and we made our choices late. Mm, you know, that is so true. I mean, that CPC, I actually have it written down here on my wall. I look at it every day. It's just such an important thing to have for everybody. So that's amazing. And Greg, I have another question for you. I've watched almost every single interview you've had. And just curious, what is something that you could share with the audience that maybe people don't know about you? You know, you've got this amazing figure about everything that's going on, but who is the real Greg Reed? What's happening inside? I had the goofiest guy you've ever met. I wish people come to the house. It's so funny. The only rule I have is you got to play games. And so I've got a pool table. I got ping pong, basketball, frisbee, golf, you name it. This whole house is a bachelor pad of amazing games and activities. And the reason is you can learn about someone's character and how they play a game is how they play life. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes to do business with me, first of all, I challenge them because I don't think they can beat me. But more importantly, I like to talk a little smack. But you get to see how they react to a bad move or a bad game or what have you instantly and right away. So I like to put people under the microscope real quick. Well, that's interesting. So just if we could unpack that, which type of games are you talking about? Pool, golf? What do you like to play? Yes, exactly. All the all the above. Pickleball, tennis, <laughs> uh, football, basketball. Every day we throw footballs you know, three times a day with me and my, uh, you know, the, the neighborhood and the kids and the people that come over and the guests and the, whoever drops the ball first has to do a hundred pushups. And then the, we go to the next game and we do the same thing and the same thing. So it's kind of a round robin nonstop. So we're always pushing each other to do better. Wow. it's amazing. I'd love to get the honor to come play games with you. That'd be great. Yeah. You'll get, you'll, you'll get whooped. So as long as you don't mind getting a little, uh, you know, don't consider a whooping, but more of a lesson. Okay. I'd love to, I'd love to get a lesson from you, the legendary Greg Reed. And just the last few questions, because we're kind of running out of time here. A little bit about your family, what you're doing. I was watching this story, with, what you're doing with your son, Colt. And I think it's so inspiring because so many people need to learn from you. And a lot of parents, I get a lot of questions also in coaching. You know, what do we teach our kids? What do we do? But I really love the mantra that you told Colt and what you're doing. So could you explain about where you came up with these philosophies and how you're teaching these kids, these secrets to success, as they say? Yeah. And again, he just, what he did is he watched a lot of interviews and just tied like 40 in together in one little question. So my son is eight years old. And when he was a kid, only seven, he had the number one album on Amazon for spoken word. And basically he has a mantra he says before he goes to bed. And then a buddy of mine put like hip hop music to it. And it took off like crazy. In fact, he has his own Spotify channel, Colt Reed. And his mantra is I'm happy. I'm powerful, I'm brave, I'm wise, I'm worthy, I'm successful, I help people, my name's Colt. And it's really cool, he says this out loud a lot of times and he teaches to the other kids. And on the same note, you know, it, my son is kind of like a little Petri dish. I feel sorry for him sometimes, but I'm stoked because he gets a lifestyle that I wish I had growing up. And I don't know when he gets older, he'll look back and go, man, you know, but who knows? But right now I'm teaching them the things that they just don't teach you even as adults. For example, financial literacy. He's only eight years old, but I let him make his own decisions. So instead of paying him money to do chores, like, you know, make his bed, pull weeds or do whatever, uh, I realized why train a child or a human being, the only way to get paid money is to do something that they hate. 
it makes no logical sense. So I found stuff that he thrives at, like making TikTok videos and things like that. And so he makes a lot of my memes for me now. And by doing that and editing them and putting them up, he gets his allowance for being rewarded of something he thrives at. And the other things like making the bed and doing the things is his contribution for living this amazing lifestyle that he does. So we just kind of flipped the switch. And by doing that, he just constantly focusing on how he can grow in Excel. That's amazing, Greg. Just the stuff you teach is just such an honor to even have you on the show. And just uh, the last few questions I want to ask about your personal habits and stuff, because people look at leaders and they think, what are they doing? What is this thing they're doing in the morning, afternoon? How are they training themselves? And, you know, Bob taught me a lot too. I was, you know, before I didn't have very good habits, but after working with Bob, he taught me some new things, like for example, the gratitude in the morning. So just kind of curious your routine in the morning. Do you write down 10 things you're grateful for? What's it like in the day? And then also at night, what's your mantra that you do? Again, that's like 18 different things right there. So I, I don't have the exact same process as most people. So I'll tell you right now, cat out of the bag. So what people watching this, you might go, whoo, because I don't have any of that stuff. The only thing I do have a common denominator is the first thing I do is I say, thank you. No matter what, as soon as my eyes open, I go say thank you because it's another day and I'm blessed and honored. And when I go to sleep, the last words out of my mouth are thank you. And so I figure by bookending it, it sets a gratitude day for the things that come. And I do not write down the things that I'm grateful. I just acknowledge the things I'm grateful. Rather than doing all that stuff, I just live that lifestyle. And again, the lifestyle I lead is different than most people. Look, I just have just got 33 years sober. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't use drugs, I don't have all these vices. I, I never talk about it. People, you know, unless you ask, like you just did, I, I wouldn't share because it's not my job to put, you know, project my lifestyle. So I live a very clean, active, physically good lifestyle. And by doing that, guess what? I'm happy, I'm positive, I'm brave, I'm wise, I'm worthy, I'm successful, I owe people. So I don't know if there's a common you know, trend or not, but the realities are, I like the life I live. That's amazing, Greg. We really appreciate it. We're so glad that you went through the transformation. And I'll just touch with the final question here before we wrap this up. You know, because a lot of people are moving through their life right now and they're trying to achieve their C-type goal, but it's difficult to do that. So my question to you, Greg, is how could you advise people to go after their dreams and do what they really want to do instead of listening to other people? Like what, what did you do in your life when you saw yourself in this position and how you got there? Like, how did you get to that position? How did you see yourself in your mind? Did you use a vision board? What did you do? Okay. So exactly what you, I said earlier, I sought counsel, not opinion. So when I went to Spain and I went running with the bulls, I did not ask some surfer here in San Diego to take me to Spain to run with the bulls. I found the people that wrote the definitive books on it and asked them exactly, where do I stand? How do I do it? When I went to Africa to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, again, I found the Sherpa, the porter that climbed it 900 times. Wherever they put their boot print, I put my boot print. All I do is I follow the successful actions of other people. And I never ask people that have not done what I want to do. It, it makes no logical sense. For example, a buddy of mine, Gene Landrum, created Chuck E. Cheese. But if I was going to start a restaurant chain, I'd probably go to Mr. Beast, who's doing all these ghost kitchens and blowing it up and doing it in a different way today. And so, uh, you know, it's how do you seek people that are getting the results you want? Ask them for counsel, duplicate it, add your own spin. You can have it too. That's amazing, Greg. I really appreciate the advice and everything you gave on the show was absolutely incredible. Where are you most active? Twitter, Instagram, where should people follow you on all your platforms? Where's the best way to keep following Greg Reed and stay in touch with everything you're doing every day? Well, thank you. So Clubhouse, yeah, come join me on Clubhouse. I'm just at Greg Reed. And on Instagram, I'm Greg S. Reed. Come join me over there. Say hi. If you send me a DM, it goes right to my phone. I promise you I'll get back to you right away. My only thing is I'm not a small talk guy. I don't like to talk about the weather or what you ate for dinner. But if you sit there and say, hey, what's a business book I need? Or who's a connection over here? I promise to get back to you right away. And I hope to see you all at my mastermind group one day soon. Amazing. Again, thank you so much, Greg, for having us on, your show, on the show. We really appreciate you and looking forward to more success. Thank you.